the Saskatchewan Clinical Practice Guidelines for the Prevention and Management of Diabetes Foot Complications recognize the importance of an annual foot screen. There are approximately 63,000 people living with diabetes in Saskatchewan. The purpose of this video is to show how to perform a diabetic foot screen and record the results. Hi, I'm Kim. I'm here for my diabetes appointment. Okay, they're ready for you. You can just go in on the first door on your right. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Kim. Hi. How have you been doing? Pretty good, thanks. Well, it's been a while since we've seen you here. There are two main conditions that can affect the feet due to diabetes. These are peripheral neuropathy, which affects feeling, and peripheral arterial disease, which results in reduced circulation. Diabetic peripheral neuropathy is defined as the presence of symptoms and or signs of peripheral nerve dysfunction in people with diabetes after exclusion of other causes. One of the symptoms of neuropathy can be the loss of protective sensation in the feet. A person with loss of protective sensation could injure their foot and be completely unaware of any resulting problems. Peripheral arterial disease causes calcification, arterial narrowing and blockage of the blood vessels which can result in reduced blood flow to the feet. This can manifest itself in many ways and in particular it may cause pain when walking or at rest and result in a reduced ability to heal. Sit the patient on the examination couch with their shoes and socks or stockings removed. Inform them that you're going to examine their feet and carry out a diabetic foot screening to check their risk of developing any diabetic foot complications. The next stage of the screening process is to check the general shape of the feet for any structural abnormalities such as pes cavus, claw toes or hallux valgus, all of which could increase the patient's risk of developing foot complications. Check both feet for any areas of significant callus or dry skin, paying particular attention to the heel area. Check between the toes for problems such as athlete's foot, soft corns or fissures. Check both feet for areas of ulceration and ask the patient if they've suffered any previous ulceration. Check if the patient is able to self-care. This can be done by checking if the patient can touch their feet with ease and if they're able to see their feet clearly. If there are other risk factors present, such as nail pathologies, obesity or inappropriate footwear, record as appropriate. The next stage of the screening process is to check the patient's circulation to their feet. There are two pulses we look for in each foot, the dorsalis pedis and the posterior tibial. To find the dorsalis pedis pulse, palpate the top of the foot between the first and second metatarsal. Note that the dorsalis pedis is absent in about 10% of the population. And to find the posterior tibial, palpate the area behind the medial malleolus. Record whether either is present or both are absent. Ask the patient if they're experiencing intermittent claudication, which is pain or tightness in the calves when walking, relieved by stopping, and if they've had any previous vascular intervention. The next test we carry out is for diabetic neuropathy. This is to enable us to easily check if the patient's protective sensation is intact. For this test, we use a 10 gram monofilament. It's important that you only use reputable makes of monofilaments. This will ensure that the information you are collecting is accurate. The monofilament must be rested after use and replaced regularly, approximately every six months. The advantages of this test are its simplicity, accuracy and low cost. Studies have shown that the inability to feel a 10 gram monofilament is a useful test as a predictor of future occurrence of diabetic foot ulcers. Inform the patient you're going to test the sensation in their feet with the monofilament. 
show the patient that it's not sharp by first testing it on their forearm and then with their eyes closed as a comparison. The monofilament should be applied perpendicular to the surface of the skin and with sufficient pressure to cause a slight bend in the filament. If it's kinked, it'll need to be replaced. Avoid testing areas on the foot where there is callus present, areas of ulceration or scar tissue. You may have to test proximally or distally when any of these are present. Do not make any repetitive contact or allow the monofilament to slide across the skin. The patient should have their eyes closed and respond yes each time they feel it on their foot. Yes. 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 The total time yes. from contact to removal of the monofilament should be approximately two seconds in duration. The sites and timing should be randomised to prevent the patient guessing. Ask the patient if they're experiencing any pain, paresthesia, usually described as tingling or burning in their feet, and record as appropriate. We are now going to carry out a simple diabetic foot screening on our patient in a clinical situation. Firstly, we check that there has been no previous amputations. We then check the general shape of the feet for any structural abnormalities. Check for areas of callus, paying particular attention around the heel areas. Check between the toes for any problems such as athlete's foot or fissuring. Ask the patient if there has been any previous ulceration. Check if the patient is able to self-care by being able to reach and see their feet easily. We then check the two pulses on either foot. Firstly, the dorsalis pedis and then the posterior tibial. We are now ready to carry out the neurological test using the monofilament. I'm about to test the sensation in your feet using this monofilament, but first of all, I'll test it on your arm so that you can see that it doesn't feel sharp. OK? You feel that? Yes. And if you close your eyes, can you still feel it? Yes. OK. I am now going to test the sensation in your feet, so if you'd like to close your eyes and just say yes each time you feel anything on your feet. OK. Yes. 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 Regular foot screening and risk assessment, along with education and timely referral, help to prevent diabetic foot complications. In this section, we will look at areas of the foot screen and recording method that differ from the Scottish video. Kim is here for a diabetes visit. Let's join Linda as she performs the foot screen. Linda is using the diabetes foot screen form included in the Saskatchewan Clinical Practice Guidelines. Okay, Kim, so the first thing that I want to do is check for swelling. So I'm just going to go right down the legs and check right at the ankles to see if there's any kind of swelling there. We're just going to check to see about the shape of your feet now and see if there's any swelling. Okay. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is pick up the foot here and have a look. I'm looking to see and feel if there's any kind of lesions or any kind of bumps or if there's any bruising or any kind of dried skin. Mm -hmm. Checking along the back of your heel to see if there's any callus. Feels good. And now I'm going to just check with your toes to make sure that there's no dry areas underneath there or any cuts. Does this hurt at all? Is there any kind of... No? No? Okay. So that's good. Now let's just check the other foot. Okay. Again, I'm just going to check along the inside of, the, of your arch, and this is something that you might want to do at home, okay, just to make sure that there is nothing that's sore or, or, okay. or dry along there. Okay. The heels are very nice. Just going to check again the bottom of the toes. Now that's a tricky thing. Sometimes you may want to put a mirror on the floor so that you can see if there's anything, any soreness? No? No? Okay. And well, that's good. So now we're going to check your temperature. 
So I'm going to just do this by placing my hands on the top of your feet. And what I'm looking at is to find out if the left and the right are the same temperature. Because what that indicates is that the circulation is good and equal on both sides. Okay. And yep, temperature feels great. So now I'm going to test the strength of your feet. I'm going to place my hands on the top of your feet and I want you to push against my hands. Push up. Excellent. That's very good. Relax. Now I'm going to place my hands underneath the soles of your feet and I want you to push down. So if you're pushing down, making a pointy foot. Good. Excellent. And that's just perfect. Your feet are just fine. People with diabetes want to avoid foot infections which may occur if the skin becomes broken. Ask the client who cuts his or her nails and if there are any problems. If needed, a referral can be made for assistance with nail care. When examining the foot, note an abnormal foot shape, swelling, increased foot temperature or redness, and weakness. In Saskatchewan, we recommend testing 12 sites for sensation on each foot using the monofilament. It is important to look at the footwear for fit and pattern of wear. Shoes should fit well with good support and have lots of room for the toes. Look in the shoe for any foreign objects, such as a stone. People with loss of sensation are often unaware that they may be stepping or walking on a sharp object. They often experience decreased sensation to heat and cold. So Kim, in order to help you keep your feet as nice as they are right now, we've got a little brochure that we want to show you, okay? okay. It's about why people want to look after their feet and what are the things to do and don't do. An important part of managing diabetes is taking care of the feet. And then over here it's talking again about not smoking. You don't smoke, do you? Oh, no. Good for you. And watching out for hot water. Making sure that your feet are not wearing, being compressed in tight shoes or sandals. Saskatchewan's client brochure shown here is available from Saskatchewan Health. If you will be doing foot screening for people with diabetes, talk with your colleague, physician, nurse, or other providers to determine your specific role, when to refer, and how referrals will be done. Services in Saskatchewan may differ between health regions. However, all agree that early detection, treatment, along with education on self-care are key to prevention and management of foot complications. In the true spirit of collaboration, the small video company has generously agreed to share their video produced in 2008 for the Scottish Diabetes Group. Thank you.